What's up guys? Over the past weekend I was watching an awesome boxing fight and as I was watching I was going man these guys are doing the perfect demonstration on how a shorter fighter should fight a taller guy and how the taller guy should fight the shorter guy. Absolute perfection. So today we're going to look in depth at that fight. Make sure you guys understand all the essentials that you must be able to execute to be able to face somebody who's a different height than you. Super important absolute basics that you must know. Let's dive right into this episode. All right, guys, the fight I'm referring to is Charlo versus Castano. Amazing fight. They ended up going the whole 12 rounds, battled to a draw. But as I was watching this, I'm just going, man, these guys are executing exactly the way that I would tell people that you need to fight somebody taller or shorter. It was almost uncanny how fantastic they were demonstrating exactly what needed to be done. So today we're going to break down all these points, four for the shorter fighter, four for the tall fighter, and we're going to have video clips for you to watch, follow along, see exactly how this should look. So guys, let's start what Castano did really well at, and it was getting his taller opponent in Charlo, getting his back to the ring ropes. Now guys, if you are the shorter fighter, it is going to be very difficult to pin this guy down and get lots of big bursts of shots going if this guy has freedom to roam around. He's constantly moving, he's constantly running, which is what the taller fighter wants to do. So to avoid this, we need to pressure the taller fighter, put his back against the ring ropes. Always trying to move him back, move him back, angle, corner him. So when he gets his back to the ring ropes, then he has nowhere to run backwards anymore. Now it's only sideways. Castano does this so well. He gets Charlo's back to the ring ropes time and time again. And then from there, he's able to go to work. Being able to pressure somebody into the ring ropes is a go-to strategy for the shorter fighter. Now you might be going, oh, okay, well, how do I get to him? How do I get my first punch going? Because every time I step in, I get hit. Well, just make sure your first punch head is off the center line, pressure them backwards. And then once they end up getting to those ring ropes, it's time to go to work. Now guys, the next point for the shorter fighter is once you do all the work getting this guy's back to the ring ropes, once you do all the work to get to the inside, you need to stay really tight. I like to use this sometimes as the taller fighter even. If I get somebody against the ring ropes, I like to pressure them. But Castano does a really good job. He almost uses his head. He places it forward and then from there he's able to let his shots go and he's at his ideal punching range where Charlo is probably feeling a little bit jammed. Again, you're from the outside. You don't like it here. You want to work to the inside. After all the work of getting to the inside, stay super tight and then you can let those hands fly away. Castano did such a good job with both the previous points that I mentioned. Now moving into the taller fighter strategies, we're talking about Charlo now. Whenever you finish a punch or a combo, it's super important that you don't stand your ground because that's going to give the shorter fighter the opportunity to close the gap very quickly and get to the range he wants. So our strategy, which Charlo used very nice is I throw my combo and I always step back after. I know this seems very basic but it's so important. I'm out of range. I'm at my ideal distance. Maybe I can't touch him. I step in and I throw and I exit. I saw this from Charlo so many times. Fantastic way to keep yourself at distance and not get sloppy and lazy and let the shorter fighter close the distance too easy. Now we already talked about what the shorter fighter wants to do to make it difficult for the tall guy. He wants to get our back against the ring ropes. Once our backs against the ring ropes, what can the taller fighter do? Well, we need to learn how to angle off. We do not want to stay here. We need to learn how to slip angle and then retake the center of the ring. Super important. Again, not something that I'm going to go into massive detail here. I'd have to show you all the footwork and the tactics, but if the guy's jamming against me, I can put my hand against his shoulder, push him off and angle out, or I can just drop my head, take an angle with my foot, and then I'm at that point where I now have that ability to circle. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy and it doesn't mean the shorter fighter in front of us isn't going to cut the corner off. When we angle, they might try and follow us. So it's very important to have really really good footwork so you can fake one way switch switch and then maybe finish off another direction if you have somebody who's tracking you time and time again all right let's move back to the shorter fighter and we are talking about throwing fast 
light combos before letting your big power punches go. Castano did this very, very nicely, executed it many times. If every time as the shorter fighter, I go, okay, I'm gonna jump in and just try and hit this guy full power. It makes it much easier for him to take small little steps, pick away at me, but if I get him to close his guard up because I jump in and I let a quick combo go, he guards up, he plants his feet, then after my one, two, three, I can close the distance even more and then sink in single hard shots. Fast combos on entry and then following with my power shots, which will hopefully hurt this guy more because as the shorter fighter, I should have more power because of my wider, more powerful build. Moving back to the taller fighter, we're talking about having a head movement, never stopping with that head movement. As soon as I go stationary and I let my feet go flat, I give this guy the opportunity to bounce in. But if I always just stay in motion, it's gonna be very difficult for him to tag me, especially when as the longer fighter, a simple lean back will evade most punches. And we see here, when Charlo stands stationary, his head becomes much easier to touch. But most of the other time, it's much harder to find him. So as the taller fighter, even if you're a kickboxer and you're standing like this, you can still you know, keep your head in motion instead of just standing square and having no movement whatsoever. Decently important for kickboxing, massively important for MMA or boxing as the taller fighter. Now from here, another point for the taller fighter, which Charlo did very nice, after attacking the head, we want to dig down to the body. Why is this so important? Well, as the longer fighter, it's easier for us to tag this guy, which means he's very often gonna have his hands very high, and he's gonna be guarding his head very, very well. But when people guard their head very well, their body opens up. You let the hands go, you let the hands go, and you dig down to the body. You're sliding away up top. As soon as you see those arms come too high, dig down to the body, which may, present the opportunity for the head to open up and we can come from body to head. And guys, the final point for today, which goes to the shorter fighter, is making sure you keep your knees bent on the attack. If I'm already down here just because I'm shorter, but I have my legs straight, when I start letting my punches go, I wanna be even lower. If I can bend and get down here, it's gonna make it so hard for this taller fighter to find those counters, because he's used to throwing his shots up here all of a sudden, the head's here, and the body shots are way down low. And Castano does a great job of this. He bends his knees, he gets super low, and he rips his shots. It's just him throwing over head height. He can still gain so much power from that. And if he needs to, he can go from bent, stretch his legs out, get lots of power, and then drop right back down. Shorter fighter, remember to bend your knees. You're not trying to stand taller because you're the shorter guy. You're not trying to match this guy's height. Bend crunch down and make yourself a hard target because you're so low. Great points here guys from both of these amazing boxers. They did a fantastic job demonstrating all the basics of fighting somebody who's a different size than you. Amazing for all of us to watch and learn. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed getting to learn all these key points that you must know. If you did enjoy the video guys, give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel and get subscribed. I have so many videos coming out right now. So much fantastic information for you to improve your striking. And guys, as always, Train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.